Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 5th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop here. You can see our big storm is starting to fill, weaken, and move northward. It's going to bring some increased winds across the Washington and Vancouver Island coastline, northwest interior, and the Strait of Georgia here. We'll continue to watch off through the extended forecast as well. As we're going to continue to bring systems across the region, we should continue to build up a nice snowpack across the Cascades and some of BC here and continue to bring precipitation across the region. We'll watch these systems here in the extended forecast forecast here in a minute. Now you can see peak wind gusts here, National Weather Service, Seattle, Crystal Mountain. Look at that. Enum Claw, my buddy called me from out there yesterday and he was getting some pretty good damage going on there with some trees and branches down across the area. Maple Valley up over 53. The Federal Way one, there is some question about this uh, gust here because it didn't look like the Stampede Gap winds got down there too badly. But look at SeaTac gusting 49 out of the east there. There are quite a few branches here towards the SeaTac area yesterday and you can see North Bend gusting into the 40s as well. And this is a good idea to remember this. Gale and hazardous seas warnings are in effect here. You could probably send this all the way up to Washington coast towards Vancouver Island as well. Energetic waves are possible watch out for those sneaker waves if you're out there wave watching today as well folks now taking a look here this is the global look at the jet stream at 39,000 feet and you can see across the pacific aimed at the west coast here we have the strongest jet stream on the planet currently so i just thought i'd point that out to you and that's why california is getting a lot of active weather and why we continue to get systems brought up here across pacific northwest nothing extremely strong in our near future yet but this can change rapidly so we have to watch this closely here as we go on into the future and we'll continue to do so day by day but just thought you guys would like this look at that very powerful jet stream continuing to race across pacific ocean here across china and japan all the way towards the california coastline there now this is total precipitation in inches let me back up a little bit here this is hot off the press is european run so we're getting the first look at things here and you can see as we go through the day friday not too much precip, just light amounts. But as we go through the day Saturday, it looks like it's going to be a fairly rainy day across a lot of the areas west of the Cascades up towards BC as well. As you can see Seattle and Portland piling up the precipitation here as we go through the day Saturday. Also, atmospheric river feature down here on the southwest Oregon coast. But you can see the good amounts here across Vancouver Island and British Columbia as well. And you can see the rain shadow effect going on across eastern Washington. And a lot of these storms just aren't making a lot of headway off to the east right now. Cascades west for the most part. Keep Continuing this into motion, you see additional precipitation falling. Seattle piling it up, Portland piling it up. This will be snow across a lot of the Cascades of Washington, Oregon. British Columbia probably going to be the winner here as far as snowfall across Pacific Northwest. <clears throat> Excuse me, but you can see the end of the forecast here at 180 hours. The model is still running, but you can see some pretty good precipitation amounts across the Puget Sound, Willamette Valley, a little bit of a rain shadow there across some of Whidbey Island in the lee of the Olympic Mountains here. Pretty good precipitation amounts across Vancouver Island as well. So this is that low that's developing or actually filling. This was the big one yesterday, and you can see it weaken rapidly as it moves up north of Vancouver Island. Additional systems continuing to bring in precipitation as we go on in through Saturday, shown here. Here comes Sunday, more precipitation riding up with that one. Also, you can see the mountain snows occurring here across Pacific Northwest as well. And you can see continued low pressure systems moving up the coastline. It's going to bring some windy conditions off and on for the Oregon, Washington coast, Vancouver Island. Nothing too extreme just now, but we've got to watch this as the storm track remains nearby here. This could change. You can see this pretty deep low here near the 180 hour mark. This would be off in through next week shown here. But we're going to continue to be wet here through the seven day period, probably across Pacific Northwest. Now, this is what happened yesterday. This deep low out here was far enough to the south here where it brought these strong easterly winds. You can see the easterly component on the north side of the storm here. And that's why we got those good stampede gap winds that caused that damage and through the gorge there down through Portland and even up towards uh, Gold Bar and whatnot north of uh, Stevens Pass there. Some good east winds moving out towards the lowlands as well. Put this into motion and you can see the low moving north today and bringing some stronger winds towards Quileute, Vancouver Island. And you can see this really pick up across the northwest interior here, the San Juan, some of Whidbey Island, and maybe even some of the immediate areas along the Puget Sound up towards Bellingham as well, straight at Georgia also, as additional systems continue to move up the coastline and we bring off and on windy conditions there as atmospheric rivers continue to pound into California here through the extended forecast. And going on in a little bit further here, you can see continued systems the further out we go as well. So we'll watch the tracks of these storms. As 
as we go on into the extended forecast. Total snow in Kuchera here. So let's just let this run out again. This is the 12Z European hot off the presses here. Hour 180. You can see some pretty good amounts across Washington Cascades. A little bit less across Oregon there. But you can see northeast Oregon getting a nice shot of snowfall for the higher terrain there. As well as northeast Washington. BC, nice amounts. Vancouver Island, a little bit mountains with a nice coating coming up here but you could see some totals up over three feet for some of the cascades of washington shown there and you can see no lowland snow right now but that could change as we go on and through winter here you know how the februarys can be around here the last past the, the last few years here we've had some interesting february so we're kind of holding out for that right now but we'll look at the extended forecast here in a moment Here's that deep low pressure center off the coast now that's filling and moving northward. Again, this is hot off the presses, European 12Z run, which is 4 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. GFS is here on the right. Of course, good model agreement in the short term with these systems continuing to rotate around the Pacific Ocean here. And you can see good model agreement all the way out to hour 105 here. Just a little bit of timing differences show up here as this trough remains open across Pacific Ocean here, continuing to pinwheel storms here in to the Pacific Northwest and along the West Coast. And you can see the good model agreement with the troughing across the Gulf of Alaska through our 180 here shown on the brand new European model on the left and GFS here on the right. Now here's significant wave height and direction. So as we go through this morning here, this is this morning about 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can see the wave increase there along the Washington, Oregon coast as we go through the day today. And that kind of extends all the way up towards Haida Gwaii, all the way down through Southern California as we go on and through tonight with additional systems bringing their swells in as well on through the extended forecast here. I always like to look at these maps here and watch these wave heights really build here. Check out this one in advance of the system well off in through next week but yeah great time to be wave watching here along the washington oregon coast vancouver island if you can get out there to the coastline it's kind of remote out there but yeah interesting map there this is southwest regional airport this is what's going on actually probably right now some gusts up towards 50 miles per hour could still be occurring and you can kind of see the smattering of potential High wind events here as we go out in through mid-January. We'll watch those systems one at a time right now. Uh, Storia, this is occurring as we speak right now. These gusty winds are moving up the Oregon coast towards the Washington coast now. This is Quileute. This is going to pick up as we go through the day today. You can see a lot of the ensembles here up over 50 miles per hour. Some of them even closer to 60. So pretty good wind coming up through some of the Washington coast as we go through this afternoon and tonight. This is for Portland. This is kind of shows that east wind event as of yesterday. It's just wrapping up now across some of the Portland area and probably still some blustery conditions going on. But you can see not much in the way here through January about 10th here as far as windstorm potential. That could change. We'll continue to watch it. This is Stampede Pass. Some good winds out of the east were rolling around up there as well. The mean up towards 50 miles per hour shown there. And then you can see we relax a bit with the potential for more systems as we go on in through mid-January. This is Orcas Island. It's going to pick up through this afternoon and evening. You can see some of these gusts up over 50 miles per hour out there. So heads up if you're riding the ferry out to the San Juans. Um, there could be some delays and hopefully they're not. But you can see some of these gusts up towards the 50 plus mile per hour range. Even up towards 60 miles per hour here. So that is for this afternoon and evening up there. Whidbey Island getting in the action as well. Some gusts up over 40s are in the 40s are likely here as we go through tonight on in through tomorrow morning also. Now this is looking at the Pacific North American Oscillation. We've been looking at this for the past few days here. You can see how as we drop back down below into negative territory here. And this has kind of been showing up in the model. So I'm interested to see what this starts to bring here for the Pacific Northwest. And what does this mean? What does the Pacific North American Oscillation mean? Well, this is positive, And that's what we're in now. And we've got the storm track out here over the Pacific Ocean here, pinwheeling the storms up our coastline as we speak. Now, this is negative territory, which it looks like we may start to move into. And this is more of a cooler pattern here with more of a north-northwesterly flow across the area here. So we'll see how this trends over the next few days. We'll continue to watch it, but you can see the difference here. Again, this is negative Pacific North American oscillation shown here. And positive would be reverse, where you have the storms out over the Pacific here and they're ridging over the continent. 
this is La Nina. Very interesting look here, folks. Check this out. Because if we go on, you see as we start into early December here, December 6th, you can see the days flying by here. This is the Equatorial Pacific. Here's Hawaii. There's California there. There's Japan. And you can see dominated by La Nina until really at the end of the run, you can see some of these yellows moving in there. Above average temperatures starting to show up here along the coast of South America there and extending in towards the La Nina region here or the Enso region, I should say, where they measure either El Nino or La Nina conditions. But you can see these yellows coming in here. So changes are underway here, folks. La Nina is on its way out. Very likely that La Nina is on its way out. We're likely going into neutral conditions and possibly even El Nino conditions by next winter. We'll see how that trends, but the models have been correct so far. And you can see this change taking place real time as this goes on in through January 4th. So anyway, yeah, we'll continue to watch that. We'll watch these storms roll in here over the next few days. Um, getting a lot of new subscribers. I will cover other areas of the country as things are active and California is going through a pretty important time here and it, you know, it'll go on for a couple weeks here and then California will calm down again. And I'll always do the Pacific Northwest here. You guys probably see me putting out some of these videos for California, but I am born and raised here in Seattle and I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to do these daily briefings as always for the Pacific Northwest. And yeah, so I may do another live stream over the next couple of days for California to kind of highlight some of the threats coming in. As you can see, these storm systems, one after another, are going to be lined up into the state of California. But these are also going to impact us here across the Pacific Northwest. So we'll continue to watch them and the track and what impacts we can expect. But anyway, thanks to all my new members and all my new subscribers. Hope you guys are enjoying the channel. And I will talk to you guys during tomorrow's briefing.